This is an HP laptop that I managed to get on eBay for just $20. And I'm going to be showing you guys the difference between that and this $2,000 high-spec gaming laptop from MSI. Let's start with the $20 laptop, which is a second-hand HP ProBook 650G1 from 2013. When I first got this thing, it was in definite need of some love. So in my past videos, I've been upgrading it, optimizing it, and getting it to run Minecraft the best it possibly can. Check this out. When I first got the laptop, it only had a dual-core Intel Core i3 processor, 4GB of RAM, and a 128GB SSD. Somehow, on the HP ProBook line of laptops, you can actually upgrade the CPU in them. So I went ahead and did just that. I threw in an Intel Core i7, and I also upgraded the RAM to 16 gigabytes of DDR3, as well as replaced the faulty battery, also bought a charger because it didn't come with one. Yeah, this laptop might not be cheap after all. This $2,000 laptop is the MSI Stealth 14-inch gaming laptop. It has an Intel Core i7 13700H, 16 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, which is upgradable up to 32 gigabytes, a one terabyte NVMe SSD, and the best part, an RTX 4050 six gigabyte graphics cards. I've been really impressed with how good the performance is on this laptop. For something so thin and lightweight, it's an absolute powerhouse. So let's see how it compares to the $20 laptop. The $2,000 laptop is extremely thin and light, and it's really portable. However, compare that to the $20 laptop, it's quite thick and it's quite heavy. Definitely not as portable as the $2,000 laptop. However, there is one advantage to being thicker and heavier, and that's that the $20 laptop actually has way more more ports than the $2,000 laptop. As you can see here, we've got a VGA port, display port, two USB ports and a headphone jack. And on the other side, we've got ourselves three more USB ports, an ethernet jack and the power connector. This thing pretty much has all the ports in the world. Compare that to the $2,000 laptop. As you can see, we've only got one USB port, a type C port and a headphone jack. And on the other side, we've got HDMI, another type C and the power connector. The $20 laptop is made of extremely cheap plastic. As you can see on the lids here, if we just press down, look at the flex on that. The lid is not very good. However, compare that to the $2,000 laptop, press down on that, we also have a bit of flex as well. So in terms of flex, I would say they're probably about equal. If we open up the lids here, we actually can't do it with one hand. Whereas on the $2,000 laptop, it's nicely weighted, nice hinges, and it just opens straight up. But for this, we need two hands for it. The $20 laptop has got cheap plastic pretty much all around. We've got a scratch in the palm rest here. We've got a keyboard, which doesn't actually flex too much if I press down hard on it. As for the overall frame, and um, I can literally pull off the plastic frame around here. It's really horrible, cheap plastic. I can even lift up the keyboard and snap it back into place if I want to as well. But yeah, not the best quality materials used. Compare that to the $2,000 laptop. This is actually made of a magnesium alloy, which in basic terms basically means it's not plastic, but it's not aluminium. It falls somewhere in the middle. And yeah, it's a really nice feeling material. It's got a really nice finish on it as well. And it's in starlight blue, which is a really unique color. The typing experience on the $20 laptop is not very good whatsoever. The keyboard does not have tactile clickiness to it. The keys feel really mushy and you can quite easily press the wrong key if you're not careful. They're really not spaced out that well. Compare that to the MSI $2,000 gaming laptop keyboards and this feels so much better. It's got really nice travel on it, really nice clicky feedback and yeah, I really like it. It's really nice. It's also got a backlight as well, which we can enable by going on the SteelSeries software. And here is the lovely RGB backlit keyboard. It's perky RGB, so it's really bright and it really stands out. And you can change it using the SteelSeries software. Next up is the trackpads. Now the trackpad on the $2,000 laptop, it's not the best one that I've used in the world, but it is a lot bigger than on the $20 laptop. It's quite nice. It's got a really nice surface. You can glide your finger along it quite well. Whereas on the $20 laptop, we have got the old school trackpad, which is quite small by modern day standards and it's also got two physical buttons which are just so out of fashion now the actual surface itself feels a lot better on the $2,000 laptop the display on the $20 laptop is a 1366 by 768 resolution panel and yeah it's definitely not the brightest screen that I've seen in fact the colors
colors look really washed out on it and if you view it from a slightly different angle the colors completely wash out i'm not sure if you guys can see on the camera yeah the screen pretty much turns off if you're viewing it from an angle so the colors are really not nice on it however if we compare that to the two thousand dollar gaming laptop we've got a 2560 by 1440 quad hd panel and the best part it's got 240 hertz refresh rate so when you're gaming on this thing it feels super smooth even just going around your desktop and scrolling up and down web pages is buttery smooth it's a really nice panel it's also incredibly bright as well so it's really nice vivid colors and the viewing angles night and day difference compared to the 20 dollar laptop not sure if you guys can see on the video. Yeah, you can definitely still see colors coming through when you're viewing it at an angle. The colors don't wash out. The colors are really bright. And both displays have obviously got a matte finish on them. To be honest, I prefer because if I shine a light on it, as you can see, it doesn't reflect as much. Whereas if this was a glossy display, it'd pretty much be like a mirror. All right, so it's time for a built-in speaker test. So what better way to do that than to play Crab Rave on each of the laptops at full volume, starting with the $20 laptop. This sounds a lot crisper, a lot clearer, and also on the video you can just see how different the brightness is on the screen. Let's see which one turns on first. Three, two, one. Oh, laptop's booting into- what? Nah, there's no way. It's in Windows already. This isn't even turning on properly yet. And it's in Windows. $20 laptop actually beat the $2,000 laptop in startup time. That's crazy. Seriously, all the optimizations and stuff we must have done to this laptop and the SSD and all the upgrades, it's definitely- Look, it's, this isn't even logged in. Yeah, the $20 laptop has actually beaten this laptop in startup time. There we go, finally. All right, it's Wi-Fi speed test time. So I know that in the $20 laptop, we've got 802.11 dual band Wi-Fi cards. Whereas in the $2,000 gaming laptop, we have got Wi-Fi 6E capabilities. So let's see which one's quicker. So far in the download speed, we're getting about 35. Yeah, it is beating out the $20 laptop. We're getting almost double the speed. Now my mesh Wi-Fi system does not stretch very well out in this room. So please don't judge my Wi-Fi speeds here. Anyway, we're moving on to upload now. And yet again, the $2,000 laptop top is marginally beating it in terms of upload it is actually quite close so yeah these are the speeds the download speed is obviously a lot quicker on the two thousand dollar laptop compared to the twenty dollar laptop but the upload speeds there isn't much in it whatsoever in fact i think the twenty dollar laptop has just slightly got more which is quite interesting all right so next up we're going to be running a geekbench 6 test which basically just benchmarks the cpu and the graphics but i'm going to do the graphics separately so let's see which cpu gets a better score all right so the results are in and this is what we got so on the $20 laptop we have got a single core score of 1162 whereas on the $2,000 laptop we've got 1637 which doesn't actually seem like there's much in it actually in terms of single core performance but multi-core is where the $2,000 laptop shines with a multi-core score of 9083 compared to only 1640 on the $20 laptop the next test we're going to do is a Cinebench render now unfortunately on the $20 laptop, it doesn't actually support our GPU. So we can't do any rendering with the integrated graphics. So to make it fair, I'm going to use the CPU on both systems on the multi-core setting. So if you don't know what a Cinebench test is, basically what it does is it renders out the exact same image on each computer. It does a couple of passes of it. It's quite CPU and GPU intensive. However, for this test, we're using the CPUs. And yeah, it's going to take quite a long time. It does a few renders of this same image. And at the end of it, it gives us a score higher is obviously better one eternity later all right that literally took forever i mean the gaming laptop did it in pretty much no time scoring in at 701 points whereas the 20 dollar laptop didn't even finish one cycle it was just taking forever i mean this laptop did two cycles in the time this could barely even do one now i had to cancel it in the end because it was just going to take hours but the score we got on here was 97 points compared to 701 on here so yeah it's quite clear that the cpu and gaming and graphics performance is much better on this laptop but let's put that to a real world test and let's play minecraft on both of these so i've just opened up the the exact same world on both laptops here and let's just look around what 
the $20 laptop's actually getting more FPS in some cases. Okay, so we're getting about $200 on the $2,000 laptop, but we're also getting $200 on the $20 laptop as well. Now, if you guys don't know, I've actually now partnered with Featherclient, and I've got my own cosmetics on their store. So as you can see here, we've got my yin yang animated cape, which I think looks really cool. It really fits the theme of my skin, which is kind of like a ninja. So we've got the yin yang here, and I've also got a headband as well. So if you guys want to check out my Feather Client cosmetics, I'll leave a link in the description down below. And all purchases of my Feather Client cosmetics go towards making these videos even better. Ah, I know the reason why we're not getting more FPS. It's because we're currently running on battery on the gaming laptop. And if you guys don't know, gaming laptops don't perform at their extreme performance when they're on battery. They're severely limited. So as soon as we plug in the charging leads here, as you can see, the FPS skyrockets back up to where it should be. We're getting about 700 FPS, 500 in some cases and it's super smooth as well because our 240 hertz refresh rates kicked in as well and it's really nice and smooth i mean just look at this we can just fly around with ease can barely hear the fans either whereas compared to the 20 dollar laptop the fans are pretty much spinning out at maximum speed but the fps is not too bad thanks to all of the optimizations that we've done in my previous videos so yeah, FPS wise, I would definitely give it to the $2,000 laptop, but it's quite funny how severely limited the performance is if I simply just do that and unplug it. Ooh, okay, three FPS there, not great. And as you can see here, now that I've just unplugged it, we're actually limited to about 60 to 80 FPS. All right, so we're currently on Minecraft 1.20.4 on both laptops. Now let's try and give the $20 laptop all the advantages it possibly can. So we're currently running Fabric and we've got loads of FPS boosting mods. As you can see here, we've got a massive long list of them, which I've been using in my previous videos. So we've got pretty much every chance in the world to try and beat this now. We're on 1.20, same world again, and we're on a pretty consistent 60 fps let's put vsync off and yeah let's try and see if we can get more fps than the two thousand dollar laptop all right so it's not looking particularly good right now i mean we pretty much got double the fps on the two thousand dollar laptop but yeah it's beating us out and it's beating us out pretty badly right now anyway let's see if we unplug the charger from the two thousand dollar laptop and watch the fps go down a lot <laughs> Look at that. It's actually a lot closer now. We're actually getting about almost 300 FPS on the $20 laptop and about 400 FPS on the gaming laptop. So yeah, I guess it's getting closer. How about if we go ahead and go on the MSI settings and put it on the battery saver mode? This is severely going to limit our FPS here. So it's now actually even. We're getting the same FPS on both laptops, which is pretty good going. I mean, considering this costs $20, yes, it feels a lot cheaper and clunkier. It is actually faster at starting up. In terms of FPS, there isn't too much in it, you know? If we use super battery modes and use this unplugged, then it's about the same. In fact, what happens if we unplug this $20 laptop? Does the performance go down? Yes, it does. The screen brightness has gone down quite a lot and the FPS difference, actually, it's not too bad. On battery, they're actually about even, which is actually quite funny on the latest version 1.20.4. We're actually getting less FPS on this one. 60 to 80 FPS here, 100 or so on the $20 laptop. So there you go. There isn't actually much in it whatsoever. So yeah, obviously it's a bit of a silly test, but I just thought we'd try and give this laptop every advantage it possibly can. And we've managed to make it just about even. Now, lots of people have been telling me to try out different games. So let's try Roblox. So we're just playing on Roblox Classic right now. As you can see, I've got my two accounts here on both laptops laptops and in terms of the performance we're getting about 60 fps on the 20 dollar laptop sometimes falling just below it whereas on the 2000 dollar laptop we are getting a grand total of 60 fps so they're pretty much even in terms of performance now i'm not very familiar with roblox whatsoever but i'm pretty sure it's quite a lightweight game quite easy to run i don't think it needs much optimizing so i would say for both laptops i would call this a draw honestly in terms of performance in terms of the graphics quality they look pretty much identical here. So yeah, I don't think there's much of a big deal, honestly, in terms of the performance on both of these laptops, as far as Roblox is concerned. Right, I found a way to actually increase the graphics settings. So I've put the graphics quality on like the maximum bar you can possibly get. And uh, let's see what frame rate we get now on the max quality. All right, so that's decreased things a little bit for the $20 laptop. We're currently getting about 40 FPS. 
Whereas on the $2,000 laptop, nothing's changed. We're still getting a very consistent 60 FPS. So yeah, you should be able to play Roblox on the $20 laptop. As long as you keep the graphics settings on automatic, I think you should be okay. All right, so now we're actually playing Fortnite on the $2,000 laptop. And yeah, obviously the performance on here is really good. If we have a look at our FPS counts here, we're getting about 300 FPS, which is not too bad whatsoever. Video settings here, our frame rate is on unlimited, windowed full screen, full resolution, resolution, full brightness. In terms of graphics quality, it's on performance mode right now. However, our view distance and textures are on the epic setting. So yeah, it's we're pretty much on the maximum performance here. 500 FPS, 300 FPS. It's perfectly playable, really nice and smooth, really nice vibrant colors. Yeah, it's a really nice laptop to game on, although it does get a little bit hot. I can definitely feel the keyboard is starting to get a little bit hot here under loads. Anyway, let's see how it runs on the $20 laptop. Top. So yeah, I've literally just opened it up and joined the same parkour map. And to be honest, the performance isn't actually too bad. We're getting about 50 FPS. It's not too bad, I suppose, but it could be better. But the video settings that we're currently running on here is actually quite interesting. It's actually put them on the lowest pretty much for us. So we've got the rendering modes on pretty much the lowest. We've got a frame rate limit. We may as well put it on unlimited. We've got V-Sync off, windowed full screen. All of this looks pretty much good. Yeah, in a parkour world, I don't think really you need the best. Whoa, I don't know if you guys can see that. My screen's flickering. What? Is this like a graphical problem or something? What's going on? I actually don't... Oh, okay, weirdly. So when I look down... Oh, it's not doing it now. Okay, there it is a little bit. Yeah, this is really weird. I don't know whether the graphics just can't handle it or maybe my screens come loose, the cable. I don't know. What's actually happened? Very weird. But yeah, that's pretty much how Fortnite runs on here. To be honest, I'm pretty surprised. I thought that this was just going to be like a 10 FPS mess, but it is actually quite a well optimized game considering the low end hardware we're running this on. And if you want to see more Fortnite tests, then definitely let me know in the comments. So what's the verdict? Obviously, the $2,000 laptop pretty much dominates in every single aspect of this video. However, let's give some love to the $20 laptop. I mean, for basic tasks, just general day-to-day -day web browsing, and maybe some light gaming, for example, on Roblox, this laptop is pretty much all you need. And for $20, I got it for a very good price as well. Now, in order to get the most performance out of a laptop like this, then your best bet is probably installing Linux. And if you want to check out my last video where I did just that, then click here and I'll see you guys there.